Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Uh, another Monday night in town. Hope you're having a lovely night. And what I like about this show, and we've been doing this for about seven years, and uh, thank you very much for watching all those years. We've had some really great people on the couch, and they're authentic, and they're real, and they haven't got any masks on. It seems to me that uh, every time I talk to my clients as a lawyer, it's always the same conversation, you know, like, uh, how are you, Michael? Oh, great. How are you? Oh, fantastic. And, um, you know, everybody's out fantastic wearing these masks, and um, but the reality is that uh, one in three people are depressed, and, um, and some people are having a really crap time in their relationships, others are bankrupt, but we're too scared in Western society to say, how it really is. On the couch tonight, a terrific fellow. I call him a class act and a very good mate. Gary Island, he's been around for uh, a while. He's, um, he's been a, um, uh, well, he still is a, um, a champion swimmer, uh, surfer, uh, grew up under a staircase and now he's got uh, investment properties all over the world and uh, he's financially independent. But, um, but that's not that important to you, GI, is it? No, Michael, it's not at all. all that you know, stuff. I, I think... Um I think the money is just the byproduct of what the result is. You know, I, yeah. think, I think we've the the main purpose of my life is is to be able to be happy and give back to others because, you know, the money just comes. It, you know, if you really want it, it's there. You know, like, as I said, like they're always printing it Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. You know, it's very easy to get. It's just you've just got to get up every day and do it. So there's no yeah. shortcuts. You know. Yeah, I'm glad I met this man. He's a, been a great inspiration. Uh, I was feeling down, uh, you know, a few years ago there, and he said, look, every day is a Saturday night, and, uh, and the world has never looked brighter. <laughs> I like yeah. all your sayings. I yeah. remember them clearly. But uh, how did it all start, start, G.I.? I remember the story about living under the staircase, bro. What, what's going on? Yeah, well, when um, I had my parents um, die, my dad died when I was 11, you know, he had a massive heart attack at home, and my brother and I tried to revive him. We, we couldn't revive him. He was an amazingly fit man. He died at 37 years of age. So we were only quite young. And, uh, and then um, my mother went into a very, very depressed state after that. And I lost a brother prior to that as well, a little brother. Mm -hmm. And so mum had a trifecta of things. And she'd lost her parents just a couple of years before that as well. So there was five deaths in our family, all in a matter of... Um, all a matter of four years, basically. And that's growing up on... Uh, on... In, in, on the Capricorn Coast. We had a little town. We had, uh, you know, about 300 people. And I moved to the Gold Coast. Yes. And, um, and that's when I started my career. And I, I did a trade as an electrician. And then I moved on to... Uh, uh, I lied about my age to get a job, to be honest. Uh, to get a job at a bottle shop. Mm. So I was running a bottle shop and, uh, at the age of 14 and 15. And then I um, got a job on the beaches working as a lifeguard. So I... I, in those days, you could do those things because I had a development skill of I was very good in the ocean because my dad was an ocean man, I was an ocean man. And so I ended up getting a job on the, on the beach working as a lifeguard. So um, in those days, it was, and we were professionally paid by the council. So um, I had a fantastic uh, growing up period during that part of my life. But um, as you said, sleeping under the stairs, and that's uh, all I could afford. So mm. I, I had this mattress I got and I slept under the stairs and and used that as my base for quite some time. And it was a, it was a fantastic um, part. It wasn't an easy part, but it was a great part. It was a great learning part of my life. And isn't that amazing, folks? It, it, it wasn't just uh, walking along the beach, uh, perving on girls, but this man took it to the fullest. Uh, he uh, swam at uh, world-class level um, uh, Commonwealth Games, and, and then uh, they called him the super coach. I saw a few videos where he um, trained... Um, uh, Olympians and also um, then worked for the media on uh, Channel 9 yep. um, talking about the love I, I, of... I had, um, a I had a fantastic uh, opportunity with Kerry Packer who was a great man mm. and uh, I worked with Wide World of Sport for quite some time you know for nearly a you know, decade doing surf life saving and swimming and and uh, we, we did a lot of all, of... all of our television was live so it was we had a, a wonderful time I was with the great man Darrell Eastlake and and Nicole Livingston and, and Duncan Armstrong and those guys, mm. Kenny Sutcliffe. So we, we had a, a wonderful period. A wonderful life you've carved out, and you're still just a young fellow. I can see a 24-year-old bloke inside there, Jim. Yeah, G. well... But um, you, the story under the staircase, you ended up living there because um, you had no family left, did you? No, I didn't, no. So you just wanted to... Uh, you, um, you just wanted to be by yourself. Well, I, I suppose it was my security blanket, really, because it was, you know, being under a staircase, I felt a bit like Harry Potter. I, yeah. I you, you know, you could probably hear, <laughs> when I see Harry Potter, as my son watches Harry Potter and we'd, we would see them watch the movie, and I said, well, you know, like that little staircase. Yeah. I said, I started under one of them, mate. And I said, that's how it was, you know, and, and it wasn't a bad thing. 
it really gave me an understanding that's not what I want to be and where I want to be for the rest of my life. You know, mm. so, so it gives you that drive to go on to the next level. And, and, and look, I, I promised myself that, I, that I, one day that I'm going to be a world champion and be, be the best at my, at my sport. And then I want to cut, you know, then I'm, after I want to be a world champion, I want to coach world champions and I want to coach Olympic champions and I did all that. And for most people, that's just a dream, but you followed up on that. Yeah, yeah tell us so about the, um, uh, the success in the, uh, the sports. You, you love the ocean and you turn that into your life. Yeah, well, I, I, created, the, um, I created the professional um, in, in with the Ironman series and things like that, which were the Uncle Toby's and the Nutrigrain series, what we all saw on TV in, in, in the 80s and the 90s, mm. and, they were, and they were very, very big. All and, those uh, good-looking people uh, yeah, were, winning races. We all thought, God, I wish we were there. Yeah, well, well, I was. Um, I had a I had a wonderful involvement with those people, mm. and and I was part of the show. But um, my, you know, my dream was as a kid. I, I wanted to I wanted to win my first Australian Ironman title, and my, while my dad was around, and and uh, he was a he was an amazing guy. And, he, and I and I sort of followed his footsteps because I was dyslexic and I couldn't read or write. So I thought, well, I, you know, I'm not very smart at reading and writing, so I've got to do something for my body. So I'll have to use my bra you know my brain in another in another direction. You're a very smart man, mate. You're one of the smartest people I know. And so I, isn't that amazing? And uh, and what? Did, yeah, tell me more about that. And so during that period, it was a, it was a very hard time going to school during that time because you know in those days. I went to a Catholic college and, you know, if you couldn't read or write, you were put in the corner. You had a, witch's, a dunce hat put on there. You had to sit and look at the wall and the nuns would beat you with a stick. Right. So it was a quite an interesting period of my life. So, so, you know, grade one was probably the best five years of my life, as you could say. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't like school that much, did yeah, you? Yeah, no, no. Schooling no. wasn't my best subject. No, you love the freedom and the freedom is great, isn't it? I mean, at school, we spent so much time at school, but can you imagine... Uh, you know, the freedom on the beach and uh, in, uh, amazing. He's got a very fit family and now a lovely wife and his wife uh, won a gold medal at the uh, 2000 Olympics, uh, which doesn't seem that far away. Tell us about that. That's, yeah, well, um, she's a wonderful woman. She's, uh, she, she's um, just, she's rated as actually the, um, the number one water polo player for the century, the greatest female player for the century. So she's, uh, her, her, she had a dream as well. You know, the 10 year old girl, she wanted to, um, she wanted to go to the Olympic Games. She wanted to captain Olympic. She wanted to captain the, what she was going to do, and she wanted to win Olympic gold medal. And she achieved the whole three things. Then on the fourth thing, she became the greatest female water polo player for the century. So um, she conducted in the Sporting Hall of Fame. So she's an amazing girl as what well. What an exciting fit couple and good-looking couple too. Yeah, she's a um, great girl. But it wasn't always that good at the start with the uh, the relationship things and uh, I might get some advice after the next break from sure. the great man Gary Island. We'll be back very shortly with a great man GI on uh, Tough Times Never Last. Welcome back to the show and thank you very much for watching all these years and give me a call or just coming up in the street and sharing your stories. A very decent man on the couch. What I like about this bloke, he uh, says it the way it is. Uh, grew up under a staircase, lost his whole family. Unfortunately, they all passed away. Um, he didn't like school, loved the ocean. Gary Island, uh, then he uh, became a uh, world-class uh, swimmer, uh, a super coach, uh, worked for Channel 9. Uh, wide world of sport, but um, uh, never really chased the money, but the money came to him. Now he's got uh, homes all over the world, um, and he's, um, uh, he's just going with the flow. And that's uh, what you've been really doing, isn't it? But look, there's so many people, Gary, breaking up in relationships, and you've had a pretty heartfelt experience there, um, which you may want to share or you may not, but mm. um, your, your heart was broken early on. Yeah, on the on the surf beach somewhere on uh, the Sunshine Coast, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was. I was I was married to this. Uh, Those other, bloody bitches. <laughs> yeah. I was married to this other 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 girl. And she was a great girl, but um, it just never seemed to work out. Uh, it, people find their own way, and, and and I suppose people change and people grow up, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, I had no. Um, I, I don't have any 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 animosity whatsoever towards her or anything no. like that. But um, her family was such a wonderful family, mm. and I think I fell in love with the family more than more than the relationship. And I think it was mm. the family that I didn't have was the family that she had. Oh, wow! And so I think I think we get caught up in that sort of stuff, and and uh, and maybe you know you don't find your soulmate until you um, you're with the wrong one until you find the right one. You know, so. 
Well, that's right. The, and and, and uh, the first one, they say, is usually a, a practice marriage, isn't it? And uh, <laughs> I certainly had one of those. And uh, look, and I, I, I wish my uh, first wife all the love and best wishes as well. And there's no need to pretend that our life is all perfect because I think the people who think it will make out everything's perfect, they're the ones who usually end up having nervous breakdowns. So I think in life it's very important to show some kindness and just say it the way it is. And, um, and that's so true. You, um, I've never heard you say anything bad about anybody. Well, there's no need to because, you know, whatever, what, what, we, what we think is I believe is what we become. You know, if, yes. if, if you think bad thoughts about things, you know, it's going to happen to you. Yeah. If you think you're going to get breast cancer, I promise you, you'll get breast cancer. Mm. If you think you're going to have a heart attack or fall over and die or something bad's going to happen, I, pro I promise you. We're so psychosomatic. Our, our energies and our power and our mind and our bodies, what we think is so strong and people don't realise that. You know, and if they think they're in trouble, or, you know, I feel sorry for... Or, um, for example, a lot of people, as we are talking earlier tonight, you know, like a lot of people have um, drug problems. Now, now, with drug problems, you know, when people are bagging them and making, you know, condemning these poor people, and I said, well, they could be your children. I said, would you throw your child out in the street? Mm. You'd do everything in your power to save that child. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, we shouldn't have a judgment upon anybody. We should, you know, before you judge someone, take a good look at yourself in the mirror before you take that first judgment. That's some good advice. And you, you help a lot of people going through the dark yeah, times. We do, so, yeah, we you do, know, you, you do. Not only with the, uh, the students you inspire, but also uh, sometimes their parents who need a bit of help. Yeah, look, we're all, we're all, we're all children of, um, you know, of the universe. Mm. And, and I believe that, um, you know, we're just, we're just a part of the show. And now whatever we do, right or wrong, you know, no one has any right to judge us upon anything. As, no. long, as, as long as you're happy with yourself and you can live in your own skin, mm. get up in the morning and say, you know, the world's never looked so bright and I can't do a damn thing wrong, <laughs> how, how could we? You know? And that's some terrific advice. And it's some great advice for a man who uh, could have gone either way. He could have gone down the path of cocaine and... Um, uh, heroin and depression and self-pity parties but he's just um, uh, made the most of every challenge and his emotional reaction to every challenge was I'll get through this. When I first met him he was in his shorts uh, just hanging out I was, uh, in Brighton there. I said what do you do? Oh, He said I just uh, you know, wake up every day and go for a swim uh, and he said do you want to go up to the holiday house in the snow sometime? I thought it was a little shack. He's got a big mansion up there in the snow and he's got his investment properties and um, uh, he's got a very ordered mind and a very um, uh, organized portfolio for a man who says school wasn't that important. Now, th that's interesting. So for the viewers uh, who, who do want to uh, achieve success, it's not necessary to get that uni degree, is it? Well, my brother and my sister I have still alive. I, I, I have contact with them, but I haven't had any real contact with over 35 years. My brother's a QC. He's a very intelligent man. He's a, he's a brilliant man. My sister's a, a, a loveliest girl in the world. And she's... Um, and she's got degrees as well in science and teaching and PE and sport and, and those sort of things. And, and, I, and I actually have, um, I have, I have, the, I have the degree in life. Mm. And I say this to my son. I said, look, you've got two choices, my little guy. And he says, um, what's that, Dad? I said, if you want to go to university, you can go to the University of Honolulu, which is in Hawaii, which is, which is my, I feel like it's my home. It's You're home away from home, yes. And, uh, or you can go to the University of Waikiki and become a lifeguard. And get the life skills on the amazing. beach, you know. So, that's amazing. so you know, it doesn't. You don't have to um, to do that. And and it's, and I don't go to work to earn money. It, I go to work because I love what I do. Mm. And it's it's not about the dollars that we earn. You know, I, I give my time to people because I like to see people achieve something mm. and, and and get something back in in themselves. You know, to bring them get their spirit back in their heart. You know, and mm. open their minds, because we, we we're too easily closed off by other people. I remember last uh, year, um, well, it might have been a few months ago, Gary was looking pretty tired and, uh, and he just said, oh, I might go to Hawaii for a while. And you just took off for three weeks and um, you love it there, don't you? Yeah, it's just, it's just fantastic. Like, yeah. You know, like, you know, you wake up every day and the sun's never looked so bright, you know, you just, you just can't, it just, once, you, once you're there, your whole soul just rises. It's just like getting that beautiful sun, your, your body gets ionised by the ocean, you get in the water, you go for a swim, you go for a surf and... And you feel like you're 20 years younger again. So, what, what, what drew you to Hawaii in the first place? I, I used to go and race over there quite often and surf there. Mm -hmm. um, I've been going there for 40 years now, so it's been amazing. So it's it's really a and special place. You only place look 32. So what's going on there? So you've been. And, well, and, well, thanks, for that, but I'm very sunburned today. I've had a big day. You've had a big day. Uh, Gary helps um, all the lovely young kids to become champions or just um, uh, keep fit. Uh, all the schools and how many kids do you teach every week? 
Look, look, I have dealings with over about four and a half, five thousand kids a week, but we have about two and a half thousand kids in my own swim, swim schools, which I have in, in Brighton. Mm. And then we also look after the, the swim, swimming program down at the grammar, at Brighton Grammar there. Amazing. And we have a wonderful program and, and a wonderful group of kids. So, um, look, it's, it's a, it's a full-on program. We work seven days a week. And, uh, and we start our mornings every morning at four. We are, we're up and moving around at four and getting things ready at f by five and then... Well, I take my hat off to you. And uh, it, it, when I uh, see Gary there near the pool, I think, well, most blokes of his um, calibre would just employ people. But he's in the pool there every day. He's out there helping. Uh, he really believes your rewards on life will match your service to mankind. Uh, you know, he's known by over 40 million people around the world when he used to compete. Uh, but he, uh, it's almost like he's escaped to uh, the seaside of Brighton and Victoria. Uh, we'll be back very shortly and uh, we'll uh, get some more inspiration from uh, the great man G.I. Welcome back to the uh, to the couch. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Monday night in town, if you're going through some tough issues, uh, I hope all goes well. Uh, remember, quite often if we're going through some relationship problems, we've got a drug addiction, or maybe you're suffering from a mental uh, health problem, or maybe you're feeling loneliness, that can be very sad too. Or maybe you're, you're passing away and your time on the planet's limited, like a lot of my friends at the moment, they've got... Uh, you know, diseases which uh, can't be cured. Just, um, just go through the fire and tomorrow's another day. Uh, Gary Island's on the couch, a very uh, straight shooter, decent fella. Uh, he's been around for a while. They used to call him the super coach, taught many, many people who um, uh, won world championships around the world, surfing, swimming. Uh, his wife is a gold medalist at the 2000 Olympics and she was also the captain in the water polo team. He's got a beautiful son, Kalani. Life is great, G.I. Yeah, look, it's, it's never perfect, but it's great. Yeah, it is. It is great. You know, I, I can't whinge about anything, to be truthful. No. You know, I've um, I've got a lovely family, and uh, I've got great businesses, and I've got great staff and great people working around me. Terrific. So, and I've got lovely friends. Yeah, terrific. I uh, appreciate being a friend. I get I get inspired. You know, it's uh, I, I never see you uh, complaining or whinging. It's always uh, you just say it the way it is. Well, you know, I, I think I think that's the way we are to each other. And mm. I mean, you're very inspiring to myself as well. Like. You're always coming and helping people as well. So, you know, like it's it's a it's a wonderful relationship that we both have because yeah. you you you're always giving to people. Yes. So it's so easy for me to be with 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 positive people. That's lovely and and, and that's so true. It's good to hang around with positive people. As a lawyer, I, I obviously hear people stories all the time. That's why people usually end up in the courts around Australia because something's happened along the way: the divorce, the drug problems, the depression. And uh, by the end of the day, around about four o'clock, I feel pretty down and drained. I need a swim. I need to meditate, I need to do something, but um, uh, you know, life's not always fair, but it's still good fun, isn't it? If we just eradicate our personal past sometimes and just live for the now, then uh, life can be pretty, it can be an original dance, can't it? And I think also, G.I., what I like about you, you've really broken away from the opinions of other people. You don't need the approval of others. No, definitely not. No. no I've, um... You like to shock people. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, I've always, I, I, like I said, I don't have a judgment upon anybody else, but I always have my, my own self because I, I wake up and look at myself in the mirror and, and I, I, I feel good about me and I wear yeah. my slippers and I don't have to ask anybody else how good I feel or what no, I'm going to do. No, it's quite because, amazing. Because it's just exactly what I, what I want to do. And, and as we know, viewers, a lot of people always need the opinions of other people. You know, they always uh, ask, not many people own themselves or pull their own strings. And uh, you see these little social circles, you know, everybody wants to be part of a group and, um, and, you know, everyone wants to compare the stuff they've got, the latest car they've got or their suits or they flash the watch, you know, have a look at this. It's all that ego which we really have to, uh, you know, shatter on the ground. And uh, there's no need for that sort of stuff. But I've seen this man quietly watch him sometimes on those social occasions with some of the ego charged people and um, it's quite funny actually they say well what do you do mate uh, where do you get a car from and uh, you know, they look at him and oh, you know what sort of uh, shirt have you got on and and you come out with the most amazing answers don't you well you know people ask me <laughs> I, I don't I don't know what I do for a living you know people ask me all the time and I just say well I just do my best yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that's all I do you know I really you do your best I just do my best and you're not into, oh, God, it's Monday. Uh, it's right every day. Every night, Saturday night. You know, you've got to Lovely. enjoy yourself, you know. Lovely. And enjoy, you know, when you wake up in the morning, I think, well, gee, this is a beauty. I'm alive again. Good. You know? 
It's just, it, and, and by living in the now, which most people are always thinking about tomorrow or the next day, what happened yesterday, yeah. I live right now because this is what we have. This is all I own. And it's not about the watches, the cars, the houses, the business, the money. Mm. We, it's all about what we have in ourself and our heart and our family and our love and what we've got right here, right now. Perfect. nothing else matters. And that's so true, isn't it? There's no pack racks on coffins. Uh, you know, when, when it's your last uh, few breaths, when you're just about to um, uh, leave the planet and death will come and wipe you out, you can't, it doesn't matter how much money you've got, you can't then go up to a mate and say, I'll give you $10 million if I can get 10 minutes more of life or 10 more breaths. When it's over, it's over. And you, you're going to be seven foot under and all that money just uh, becomes someone else's money. So enjoy it while you're alive. Spend the money. Stop hoarding, saving. Um, and a lot of viewers would say, oh, yeah, but he's got it all. He's got the good life. We're, we're suffering. What advice have you got to the people who are uh, really down and depressed and unemployed, uh, maybe divorced, they're lonely, and they're in their 40s and 50s, can't make any new mates? They're just sitting at home going around in circles. Yeah, they've got to change their pattern because there's always a trigger point that makes you do the same thing every day. Like, there's an old saying that I always keep in my head, you know, if you do the same thing every day of your life, you only ever grow one day old. So you've got to make change. And as soon as you make that first change, and it could be a physical change, it could be a mental change, it could be what you eat, it could be what you, how, how you, how you, what, what you drink. You know, if, you, if you're drinking, well, you know, obviously you're not going to be healthy a lot. Now, you know, if you're going out smoking, you're certainly not going to be saving money. I look at these young kids today and they, they're, they're talking about, I can't afford to buy a car. But I see them buy a packet, you know, two or three packets of cigarettes a day. If they just saved that money, that, that simple bit of money of buying a packet of cigarettes, all of a sudden they could go and get a car. They wouldn't be catching a bus. Mm. They could they buy their own brand new car. Mm. You know, there's so much expendable items these days, you know, for, for less than $100 a week you can get a new car. I'm not a car salesman, but this is what you can do. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, it's so simple. And, and uh, the... Uncomplicate the your life. benefit GI of, uh, of fitness, I mean, you love the ocean and uh, it, the water makes you feel so great, but just going for a run or even a, a walk around the block, it, uh, it does change your attitude, doesn't it? It's the moment you get off the couch and get out of your house and walk around the block, you can actually smell the roses and see it's really not that bad. Mm. And, you know, in, in relationships, you know, we all go through waves and, you know, good times and bad times. Nothing, mm. nothing ever stays the same. If it, was, if it was always going to be the same, why be, why be there? You know, mm. because you, you're not going to have any, you know, you don't find that balance. And, and, you know, like your partner always has a good day and a bad day and you have a good day and a bad day. And so, you, you know, if you can't contribute to your partner's bad day and she can't contribute to yours, well, maybe you should start discussing them and opening up and telling, the, telling each other the truth instead of not being totally honest. Once mm. you let yourself go and be open, open your heart, open your mind, you can get anything you want. Because a lot of uh, relationships are quite uh, strained, aren't they, folks? You know, living together with the same person, uh, you know, five years passes, ten year passes, and everyone's pretending to be happy, but then you see all the brothels around Australia, and there's many of them, and they're always busy. They're lining up on Friday and Saturday nights, and they're not just single blokes. A lot of married people and the girls at the strippers in King Street, you know, the, uh, the guys come out, you know, Mr. Man, Mr. Universe and, uh, and the girls love it. So um, uh, people are chasing there. They're sort of escaping and doing, um, you know, uh, sort of it's, it's quite amazing that people are chasing for fresh excitement when really they should just uh, be. Uh, exactly, they should just just let it be and just let be, be who they are and be truth, truthful to themselves and flow with those. Uh, and, and 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 find that love again because the love the love's never love never changes. Just people do, mm. and people can choose what they want. You know, and like I don't have any ownership over my wife or my son. That I don't the, the person that I'm responsible for is me. Mm. And once I find the truthfulness and happiness in myself. It just flows on through everybody else. That's beautiful. That's so different to when it used to be. People were so, uh, back in the old days, uh, I will look after you if you look after me. They almost, uh, a lot of people almost chasing people to make them feel more complete or more wholesome. And, um, uh, but when in fact that's, uh, that's a wrong mindset, isn't it? Because nobody or no, nothing in the external world can make us feel wholesome. Well, there's nothing, you know, we can, as you said, we can have the flash cars and the flash houses and, and all the great things and we can go and fly to... So, you know, it's in Hawaii and New York every second week and do all those sort of mm. things. But, you know, there's nothing better than just now and being, being, being with people that you care about and enjoying, enjoying the company that you're with and, and, and finding out about what they want. And if you sometimes you just sit down and listen, you actually learn more about yourself than actually that, that you can tell about yourself. 
Wow. It's because people have the answers. And most of the answers I learn are from children because they already, you know, they're, they're like fresh a, little, arrivals. a little kid said to me today, he said, you know, he said, how come we're, we're doing this, we're doing that? And I said, listen, you've only been on this earth. He said, why did you call me darling? I said, darling, you've only been on this earth for 70 months. You're only just new. You've hardly been here. Well, you know, you're still a baby to me. You know, you haven't been here for 300 months. You're only 70 months old. <laughs> Think about that. Thank you very much. What an inspirational story. Time goes quick with you, GI. And time goes quick, folks, doesn't it? And what he's, he's quite right. In 240 months, you'll be 20 years older. So enjoy tomorrow. Enjoy tonight. Love and best wishes. We'll see you next week.